Father, that is the truth. We will give you all of our worship. Father, we will give you all of our worship. And Father, we will humble ourselves under your mighty hand. And Father, today we give you all the glory. And Lord, we ask you to have your way. Have your way in our lives. Have your way in our church. We give it all to you, Father. And we thank you today for your presence. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your deep care for us. And Lord, we give you all of our worship. In Jesus' Name, and everybody said, Amen. I think we should just have a worship morning. <laughs> a worship morning where we worship the Lord. But we'll continue to worship as we come around the Word and we're gonna worship again at the end. So I just wanna say a few things to us today. So you may take your seats. Tell the person next to you, I'm happy to sit next to you. <laughs> you know, in light of crazy um, times and seasons, there's nothing like coming together and worshipping, isn't there, church? It's amazing, and I've been doing it for a long time now, and I hope I'm going to be doing it for a long time in the future. And I thought um, about what I would speak about this morning and so what I wanna to speak to you about today is what kind of church I'd like to build moving forward. <laughs> I thought that would be a good topic. What kind of church would we like to build moving forward? And of course, as um, we have already outlined, we are building a healthy church, changing lives through Christ. And we are 100% committed to healthy church communities. We are 100% committed to building um, purpose-filled, Jesus followers. And we are 100% committed to sustainable social impact. <laughs> I've got them, they're in my spirit. <laughs> we are 100% committed to that. But I wanna share with you just a few thoughts um, coming on the back of all of that, of what I believe, what kind of church that I would like to build moving forward. So are you ready for this? Before I start, I wanna read to us, I read this um, a few weeks back, but I wanna read it again. It's in Micah chapter four and verse one. And it says, in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be the highest of all, the most important place on earth. It will be raised above every other hill, above the other hills. The people from all over the world will stream there to worship. People from many nations will come, will say, come, let us go unto the mountain of the Lord and to the house of Jacob's God. And there we, He will teach us His ways and we will walk in His path for the Lord's teaching will go out from Zion and His Word will go out from Jerusalem. What an amazing thought. In the last days, the house of God is gonna be the most important thing on all the earth. And do you know what? The enemy knows that that the house of God is gonna be the most important thing in all the earth. And do you know what, what He'd love to do is destroy that. But I wanna remind our church, yes, we're gonna get things right, but I wanna remind us all today that the enemy is also under our feet. And we are gonna look at this, we are gonna address this, we're gonna take full authority over this because we get the opportunity to build the house of God on the earth today. No greater privilege and no greater honour. In Jesus' Name. So what kind of house would we like to build? Well, I'm gonna give you a few of my thoughts. I have about like 10 thoughts and then another 20. <laughs> I'll just see how we go here. I will just say them to us. But the number one, and I believe the most important, um, we want to build a church that is actually on fire for Jesus. We wanna build a church that is obsessed with Jesus. And church, look at me, look me in the eyes. Jesus has been our foundation. Jesus is actually been our, Jesus has been our foundation. Jesus is our focus and Jesus is our future. And that will not change as long as I'm here. Jesus is our foundation, Jesus is our focus and Jesus will be our future. And I came into this church uh, as a 14 year old girl. And I remember sitting in the warehouse building called Hills Christian Life Centre. And do you know what, something happened in me. I went from knowing about God to knowing God. 
I went from religion to relationship. Everything shifted. Until this day, it's still shifting. (laughs) I discovered something that changed my life, that I could actually have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I could actually have a relationship with the God in heaven. That was a game changer for me. And do you know, church, I became obsessed. I did. I became obsessed as a teenager with God. And I want to show you what that word obsessed means because I love it. It's my word at the moment. (laughs) Obsessed means this. It's going to come on the screen. It's an idea or a thought that continually preoccupies or intrudes a person's mind. An idea or a thought that preoccupies or intrudes a person's mind. I pray that we are going to be an obsessed church when it comes to Jesus Christ, that we're going to have His thoughts, that He's going to intrude on our thoughts all day long, that we're going to be people on fire for Jesus, not a lukewarm, average, ordinary church. But come on, let's shake ourselves even today and go, okay, whatever is happening, we are going to be moving forward, a church that is on fire for Jesus, a church that is obsessed with Jesus. If we live that way, we will not go wrong. I promise we won't go wrong. We might get some things wrong, but we won't go fundamentally wrong if our foundation and our focus and our fire is in Jesus Christ. When I say that, I mean we're gonna be obsessed with His Word. We're gonna be obsessed with worship. We're gonna be obsessed with His um, his presence. We're gonna be obsessed with um, worship, His Word, His presence. We're gonna be obsessed with prayer. We're going to be obsessed with stillness. We're going to be obsessed with silence. People say a big church can't have these foundations. I want to say they are wrong because that is the kind of church that we are going to be. We are going to be a church that is obsessed with Jesus. Do you know what? I don't know a lot of things, but I do know that I can tell you that. Let's rally around the cause of Jesus. Let's dig deep into the Word of God. Let's learn how to pray. Let's draw close to Him. Let's be still and know that He is God. I know how to do that. (laughs) That is one thing I'm certain about. When there's a lot of uncertain things, that is one thing I'm certain about. And I want to take our church there in an even greater way. I want to go there in an even greater way. And so we're going to be a a church obsessed with Jesus. You know, there's a scripture in Romans 12 verse 11, and it says this, never let the fire in your heart go out, but keep it alive and serve the Lord. And do you know what? Never let the fire of God in your heart go out. I, I don't know if you've ever seen a fire. I was involved with fires in our, where we lived in Cape Town. There was big fires on the mountain and everyone got evacuated. I watched that fire go from a tiny, a tiny flame to an all-consuming fire right across the mountain. It was very difficult to put out. Firefighters were working all night long. When I came back in the early um, morning, They were covered in black. They couldn't see. Their eyes were red. They were like struggling to breathe. They had fought this fire all night long. If If you are on fire for God, it's very difficult to put that out. And I wanna say to our church, can we endeavor to live this way? And at times you don't feel on fire. At times you feel distant and far away and that's okay. There's been many times I felt like that. But you know what? I wanna encourage us and I feel like God is compelling us again to get down on our knees and to say, okay, God, I give you my heart and I ask you to put a fire back in me, keep me fully awake, ignite something that is gonna burn for the rest of time. And I feel that is the kind of church that we're gonna build moving forward. People who are obsessed with Jesus, who have a fire in their heart. You know, as a girl, as a young girl, I, was, I learned this scripture and it became, um, you know, defining moment for me. <laughs> it's in Psalm 91. And it says, those that live in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And they will declare about the Lord, He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and in Him I will trust. Those that dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And do not, I wanna encourage our church to keep finding yourself a secret place. Often mine at the moment is my car. I get in my car, I lock my doors and I hide away from the world (laughs) because no one can interrupt me there. (laughs) And whatever it is for you, find a secret place and put yourself in there and seek the face of God. And I read in my quiet time a few weeks ago, Matthew chapter six and verse six, and it says this. But you, when you pray, 
go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Do you know what? I believe our future is dependent upon us going to a secret place. And I love how it says, shut your door and pray to your Father who is in the secret place. Do you know, that's where you meet Him. Yes, He's with you all day long, of course. He's everywhere you go. But I think there's something unique and special. When you go into your room, you shut your door and you pray to your Father and is in heaven. And I wanna say to our church, we are committed as a church to the spiritual devotions that are gonna take our lives to be purpose-filled Jesus followers. That is who I am and that is what I'm committed to. And do you know what? I believe that is our saving grace. In the secret place, God refines you. In the secret place, He washes us clean. In the secret place, He convicts us. In the secret place, He compels us. In the secret place, He does all the things that we're glad He does in secret and not in public, actually. (laughs) Amen. So moving forward, church, we are gonna be a church that is absolutely um, obsessed on fire for Jesus. Anybody say amen. amen. Number two, we are going to be a church that cares deeply and understands that every person matters. How amazing is that? Imagine building a church that cares so deeply that every single person matters. And in me saying these things today does not say these things are not there. I am just telling you what we're building moving forward. It's like a confirmation. (laughs) And we are gonna build a church that cares deeply. And we're gonna build a church where every person feels that they matter. We're gonna care deeply about our church. We're gonna care deeply about the people of our church. We're gonna care deeply about our cities and we're gonna care deeply about our country. Amen. You know the word care, I wanna show you what it means because I think it's very crucial at this time. Care means this, a serious attention or consideration applied to doing something correctly. Care is where we feel a concern or a deep interest that is attached to the importance of something. And I would like to say to our church, as we continue to move forward into new chapters and new days, we are gonna commit to caring deeply. We're gonna commit to making sure that we pay serious attention and consideration and apply to do things correctly because that shows that we care. And we're gonna feel concern and a deep interest attached to the importance of things. And we are gonna pay attention to every single detail. Does everybody understand that? Because we wanna be a church that cares deeply. Now that is a high goal. Will we always hit it? Maybe not, but we are endeavouring to be a church to care deeply. We want every every person to feel like they actually matter in this place. Have you ever met anyone who cares deeply? It's a game changer, isn't it? You're talking to them and you're like, no, they actually care about me. They're not just saying a whole lot of things. They care about me, they care about my soul, they care about my life. It's an amazing thing. I remember I met John Maxwell once, just stayed with me for all time. And he doesn't really know me. (laughs) I think he cared deeply. (laughs) But we had lunch with him and A friend of ours organised it. He was like this fanatic for John Maxwell. And he's like, man, we're going to have lunch with him. I've made a plan. It's going to be amazing. And there was Phil and I. There was this couple and there was um, John Maxwell. When we went to the lunch table, he shook all of our hands and he said, nice to meet you. Um, And then when he got to me, nice to meet you, Lucinda. And then he said to my friend, nice to meet you, Megan. And then all throughout the lunch, he said, so Lucinda... What do you think about this? And I'm thinking, he's learnt my name, he's practising it, this is awesome. Uh, and then he'd use it throughout the, uh, throughout the lunch. And Lucinda, what are you um, believing? Da, da, da. And then he said, you know what, it's obvious that you men have married better than yourselves. <laughs> yes, I take it. <laughs> but do you know, right throughout the lunch, I could realise, wow, he is amazing. He has worked out how to make people feel like they matter. 
and he is showing and reflecting that he cares deeply. Do you know, I pray that that is always the spirit of this house, that people walk in here and they feel like, man, this place cares. They care deeply about me and they care deeply about my life. And that's the kind of church we wanna be. I have three children. I care deeply about my children. And that reflects mostly on how I look after them. (laughs) There is the occasional day I forget about them, but most of the time, 99% of the time, you know I left my son at home once. I came to church and I said to Phil, have you got Zach? And he goes, no, I thought you had Zach. And I said, no, I yelled to you, I'm going to the towers, bring Zach to church. He thought I said, I've got Zach, see you at church. So we left our one-year-old at home in bed. I know, but I do care deeply. I got in that car. I have never driven so fast in all my life. (laughs) You know what? Jesus actually cared deeply. He's our greatest leader and He cared deeply about everyone. And that's why it says in John chapter 10 and verse 14 to 18, it says, I am the good shepherd. And I know my sheep, I know my own sheep, and my own sheep know me. In the same way, the Father knows me as I know the Father. I put the sheep before myself, sacrificing myself if necessary. And you need to know that I have other sheep in addition to these in the pen. And I need to gather and bring them too. And they'll recognise my voice and then we will be one flock with one shepherd. And it goes on. But Jesus is our ultimate shepherd and He cares about every single one of you. He cares about me. He cares about every person who walks through these doors. Even the ones we struggle to like, He cares about them because He is our good shepherd. And I pray that our church can operate at a higher level than anyone in the world because we understand that every person matters. Every person is made in the image of God and every person matters to God. And we're gonna be a church in the future that is committed to caring deeply. If you believe it, can you say amen? Amen. Number three, what kind of church we wanna build? We wanna build a church where everybody has a part to play. That is why I love the church. It's such an amazing place. In this church, everybody has a part to play. We are not a social club. We are not an organisation. We are not a brand and we are not a show. We are the body of Christ on the earth. We are the church and we are His bride. And He is going to come back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. And you know what? We go through seasons like this because I believe it is gonna refine us. It is gonna bring the gold out in us. And it is gonna do something that is absolutely amazing in us. And so I want to remind the church, all of us in the room, everybody looking and listening to me, I wanna remind you that we all have a part to play. Everybody has a part to play. How can we build a church where we care deeply? How can we build a church where everyone feels like they're cared for? The only way you can do that is if everybody gets involved. Because today in in Australia, with Fiji, with Bali, with Asia, there's like 31 locations. In Africa today, South Africa and Africa, there's um, 18 locations. Around the world, there's many other locations. And do you know the only way that that can have a true spirit that we, that we desire and that is correct is that everybody in this room cares for somebody. Everybody has to have a part to play. And that is the beautiful story of the church. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it says this, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, some are free, but we have all been baptised into one body by one spirit and we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I am not a part of the body because I am a hand, what does, that does not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I am not part of the body because I am not an eye, would that make it any less part of the body? 
If the whole body were an eye, would you hear? Or if the whole body were an ear, would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts and God has put each part where He wants it to be. How strange a body it would be if we only had one part. And do you know, I wanna say the most beautiful picture of the church is it's diverse, it's broad, it reaches everyone. Anyone can come from any background, any creed, any colour, any socioeconomic place. And you know, we come under one name. His name is Jesus. We worship together. Everybody has a part to play. It is absolutely amazing. If you believe that, can you say amen? And you may not have discovered your part. You may not know where you fit in His body yet. I believe 2023, this is your year. You're gonna find a place, you're gonna get involved and you're gonna start to flourish in Jesus' Name. Amen. Number four, what kind of church we wanna build? Well, I, um, we wanna build this kind of church. We wanna, and I kind of have said this, so I'm repeating it, but we wanna build a church that feels like family. I said today about the 31 locations and the 18 in Africa. You know, the only way that we can make that feel like family is if we everywhere, everyone has a spirit of welcome, a spirit where everyone cares for someone, a spirit that is shepherding the church and a spirit um, of friendship and a spirit of full inclusion and a spirit of family. That is the kind of church we wanna build moving forward. We want everyone to be able to find friends. We want everyone to be able to find people. They go, yes, I feel at home here. We have a banner in our church. It says, welcome home. And do you know what? It's been there for a long time and many years. And do you know, I absolutely love it. I love it because I want people to come into this church and feel like they've come home. I want people to come in here and go, man, I feel like I've found my people. This is amazing. And do you know what? I love that sign. And let's make that sign our story where people come in here and go, oh my gosh, people said hello to me. People were friendly towards me. This is amazing. Let's push our personalities. Let's extend ourselves on a Sunday. Let's invite someone to lunch. Let's go the extra mile. Let's roll our sleeves up. Let's do whatever it takes. But let's make that sign, welcome home, our church's reality. Then there's many signs that say, you belong here. (laughs) You belong here. Let's make that our reality moving forward in an even greater way. It's an art form to be able to do that. And that's why it takes all of our beautiful minds, everyone playing their part. But we are gonna make this church a place where people go, I belong here. These are my people. I don't walk walk in here and feel like an alien. I walk in here and feel like I'm part of it. And that's the kind of church we wanna build moving forward. In Jesus' name. (laughs) Number five, kind of church. I I wanna read you this scripture actually. Ephesians 1, 3 to 5, it's really beautiful. It says this, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ. Even before He made the world, God loved us, and He chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in His eyes. God decided in advance to what? God decided in advance to adopt us into His own family by bringing us to Himself. Do you know every single one of us is adopted into Christ, into His family? How amazing is that? So we must actually have the spirit of adoption every time someone comes into this church. They're not just coming to a room, they're coming to a family. They're coming home. They're coming somewhere they can be belong. They're coming where people won't look down on them or, or you know, pass their eyes on them. They're coming to somewhere that feels like they belong and they fit in. And that is the kind of church we wanna create in Jesus' Name. Amen. <laughs> the next one, what kind of church do we wanna be moving forward? We wanna be a church with crazy faith where anything could happen and probably will. And everybody shout it. Come on, crazy faith. Did you know you can amaze God with something? There's only one thing that says amazes God. It's either our faith or our lack of faith. And I hope we're going to be a church that amazes God with our faith, where anything could happen and probably will. 
We wanna be a church with a revival spirit and that is fully awake and that has a massive outpouring. I don't wanna hear about an Ashbury outpouring on the other side of America. I would like our church in Castle Hill, Australia and Hillsong Church right across the earth to also have a massive outpouring. If God can do it for them, He can do it for us. (laughs) Come on, I believe that church. And we wanna be a church that has the kind of faith that amazes God. The story, you can read it in Matthew chapter, um, it's Matthew, Matthew chapter eight. It's the centurion whose daughter died. And the centurion said, please Jesus come and lay your hands upon my daughter. And Jesus said, yes, I'm coming. And then he got caught up with someone on the way. And then the centurion says, don't actually, don't even worry about coming. Just say the word and she will be healed. And Jesus said at the end of the chapter, I have not seen such great faith anywhere else. How amazing, just say the word. His faith amazed Jesus. And then there's another story of the disciples and they're getting together in in Jesus' hometown. And they said, oh, who's Jesus? Who, Who is he anyway? He's just like a carpenter from Nazareth. Do you know what? Because of their lack of faith, he could do few miracles. And Jesus said, I was amazed at their lack of faith. Do you know what? I pray that we'll be a church that amazes him with our faith, that we amaze him. He goes, man, I am shining down on this place. I am gonna show myself to be great because of our faith, because of our great faith in Jesus Christ. Do you know what? We are called to be a church of great faith where anything could happen and it probably will. There's a scripture. I just want to ask, is there any believers in the room? Are you sure? Because I'm about to show you something. Is there any believers in the room? Yes, Yes, up the back. Is there any believers in the room? Okay, let me read you this scripture in Mark chapter 16. And it says this. (laughs) And these signs shall follow those who believe. You just told me you're a believer. So I wanna ask you, are these signs following you? These signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, you will cast out demons and they will speak with new tongues and they will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover in Jesus' name. Has anybody had these signs this week? Any demons been cast out? Any tongues been spoken in? I mean, it's in the Word of God. I feel like this is our future. We are gonna have a crazy faith and we're gonna see demons come out of people because for too long, people have been held back by stuff and we wanna get them free so they can get on with the call of God on their life. Purpose-filled Jesus followers. How amazing. Demons are gonna be cast out. Sick people are gonna be healed. You can pick up a scorpion and it won't hurt you. I do not think that is encouraging us to go today and find a scorpion and pick it up. (laughs) Although if you're game, give it a go. (laughs) I think what it's telling us that we can actually see the impossible. We can see the impossible become possible. And then it's saying you can drink any deadly poison. I don't think it's encouraging us to go and get a bottle of poison today and drink it. I think it's actually encouraging us to have great courage where it seems like it can't happen, have great courage because we serve a great God. And I just wanna remind our church, these signs shall follow those that believe. And do you know we're gonna be a church that's known for its crazy faith where anything could happen and probably will. And revival isn't for some other town, revival is for us. Fully awake, fully outpouring of the Spirit, fully putting our trust in Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Number six, if anyone's taking notes. Number six, I wanna say, what kind of church? We're gonna build a church that is a whole lot of fun and has great joy. (laughs) Come on! (laughs) We're gonna be a church that has great joy. If we're gonna be together for all of eternity, we may as well enjoy it. You're stuck with me, I'm stuck with you. (laughs) How good is that? Some people are shaking their head, oh no. (laughs) But you know what, let's enjoy the journey. I read in my Bible this week in my devotion, It said in Ecclesiastes chapter eight, so I recommend having fun because there's nothing better for people in this world than to eat, drink and enjoy their life. (laughs) I thought that was a pretty good piece of wisdom for me this week. Do you know what? We're gonna build this beautiful, amazing church called the Body of Christ. 
And I pray that we're going to have a whole lot of fun doing it. I pray that we're going to be filled with joy. It's been a a testing, trying um, few years, a testing, trying few weeks. But you know what? Great joy can come. I believe a merry heart is like a medicine. It brings healing. And I believe great joy is going to be imparted today. I believe we're going to enjoy the journey. We're going to have a good laugh. We're going to um, laugh at each other in the purest way. <laughs> I laugh at myself all the time. Every, you can guarantee every single Sunday night when I put my head on my pillow, I have a giggle to myself like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I did that. <laughs> and do you know what? I don't even mind. I don't even mind. I will take what I do seriously, but I will not take myself too seriously because it's not about me, it's about Him. And we've got to laugh at ourselves, we've got to enjoy the journey and we've got to have a whole lot of fun in Jesus' Name. When we moved to Africa, you know, church was amazing. We had no idea what we were doing. All we had was a whole lot of passion and we thought we were going to change the whole continent (laughs) in the next few weeks. (laughs) We were just passionate. But you know what? People came to church. I used to think, what if no one comes? What if no one comes to our church? I'm like, what are we going to do? But you know what? People came to church. And then church started to grow, and it was really beautiful. And people would say to us, what is your secret? Like, what are you doing? And we're like, honestly, we're having a whole lot of fun, and then people are getting saved. And that was the truth. We were obviously preaching the Word and all those things. But you know what? In essence, that's what we were doing. We were having a whole lot of fun, and people were being saved. And I pray we can, as we move forward together as a church, that we can find the joy and the fun and the um, blessing of all of that. Amen. It says in Psalm 100 and verse 2, it says, Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness and come before Him with singing and with joy. Worship the Lord with gladness. You know that word gladness? It actually means joyfulness. It means freshness, it means rejoicing, it means pleasure and it means happiness. And we wanna worship our God with great happiness. If there's nothing else to be happy about, we can be happy that we get to worship. And um, I think that's a pretty amazing place. Number seven, what kind of house do we wanna be? A house of encouragement. You know what? There's enough taking courage out of people. So we wanna be the kind of church that pours encouragement back into the hearts of people. And in 1 Thessalonians, it says this, God didn't set us up for an angry rejection for salvation by our Master Jesus Christ. He died for us a death that triggered life, whether we're awake, living or asleep with the dead, we are alive with Him. So speak, what? Speak. Keep going. To one another. Speak encouraging words to one another. Can we be a church that every Sunday you come in, we've got like maybe 60, this is a bit of a different day, but 75, 80 minutes together. Can you just walk around and pour courage into people? Walk around and pour a truckload of courage. Can I tell you something great about your life? I just want to say this scripture to you. Can I say something about your week ahead? Let's just be the kind of people that pour courage in. Truckload of encouragement into the hearts of our people. Amen. We are going to be an encouraging church. Number nine, we are going to be a servant-hearted church. (laughs) We're going to be a servant-hearted church. Oh, actually, no, go back. Number eight, we're going to be a church where everyone can flourish. You know, pastors and leaders, you know what their job is? To equip the saints for the work of the ministry. We are equippers. We are all equippers and we are going to raise and release as many people as we can. We're going to believe in as many people as we can and we're going to encourage and release as many people as we can. And I love what God said to Gideon when he said, Gideon, you're going to go and you're going to turn this nation around. And then Gideon's like, what the heck? (laughs) What the heck, God, don't you know who I am? And God says, yes, I do know who you are. You are Gideon, you are a mighty warrior. And I speak that over you. And I wanna say to our church, do you know who you are today? I wanna say over you, look me in the eyes. You are a mighty warrior. And God says, come on, arise. Arise, mighty warrior, because we have a big job to do. Everybody, I pray that we will build a church where everybody can flourish. Amen. Number nine, we're going to be a servant-hearted church. The worship team can come. We're going to be a servant-hearted church. You know, I love it in Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. I won't read it for sake of time. But the disciples' mother 
is saying, Jesus, could you please give my sons the best place in heaven? And he's like, man, you don't know what you're asking. And the disciples are like, man, who is going to be the greatest? And who is going to be the best? And the funny thing is, Jesus didn't mind that they asked about being great or the best, because I feel like everyone wants to do something great. Like you want to feel like I did something great with my life. But he says, I want to teach you how you're going to do that. And he goes, how you're going to do that is you're going to be a servant of everybody else. And as long as you're prepared to do that, and you're going to suffer. I mean, suffer and servanthood. If you're up for that, (laughs) you can be great. If you want to be first, we suffer and servanthood. And do you know what? I pray that this church moving forward will say to everybody we meet in church or outside of church, is there anything I could do to help you? Is there anything I can do to help you? I pray that becomes our stance because I feel like that is the stance of Jesus. (laughs) Number 10, um, and my final point that I'm gonna say anything about is this. I pray that moving forward, our ambition is gonna be the fruit of the Spirit. And it says in Galatians chapter five, it says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. There is no law against these things. And I pray um, those who belong to Christ have nailed its passion and passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and have crucified them. Do you know, I pray, church, that the fruit of the Spirit will be our ambition, love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, long-suffering, self-control. It's a high call. I pray that's our ambition. Imagine if that could be our ambition. Imagine if love, I love that it's the first one, love. Imagine if that could be our highest goal. Make love your highest goal. Make our, make our ambition be the fruit of the Spirit. And I believe moving forward, that is going to be a blessed kind of church. And then I wrote down these things, what kind of church we're going to be. We're going to be an apostolic church. We're going to be a forgiving church. We're going to be a church that values marriage and family. We're going to be a church that's committed to purity and passion, cleanliness, clean hands, pure heart. We're going to be a safe place for people. We're going to be like an oasis of refreshment. We're going to be a strategic people. We're going to be innovative and prophetic. We're going to be wise and we're going to stand in the fear of God. We're going to be thoughtful and generous. We're going to be a mission-focused house. We're going to be a shepherding church. We're going to be a unified church. We're going to be a teaching church. We're going to be a hardworking church. We're going to be a church where absolutely um, deeply passionate about lost people finding Christ and becoming whole. We're going to be a generous church and we're going to be a big spirit at church. That to me sounds like a pretty good church. I could sign up for that one. (laughs) And I pray church, We're going to move forward and we're going to press on and we're going to take ground. And I believe that's the kind of church we want to be. If anyone says amen, can you say amen to that? Amen. Amen. Come on, can we stand together? And we're going to end our service by worshipping Jesus. And then I'm going to pray for us. And Amen. Beautiful. Open up my heart to you. I open up my heart. What only you can Jesus have your way in me now I open up my heart to you I open up my heart to
Amen. Church, I would love to just take a moment before we finish today and pray for a few groups of people. And the first group I'd love to pray for is maybe you're in this room this morning and you say, Lucinda, if I'm honest, I don't actually know the Lord Jesus, but I would love today to open my heart to Him. Maybe you found yourself in here with a friend or you've just walked in today and you say, I don't know the Lord, but I would love to open my heart to Him today. Or maybe if you're honest and you're amongst family, you say at one point I was following God, but if I'm honest, I've lost my way but I wanna come back into a true and real relationship with Jesus. I would absolutely love to pray for people like that. If you do not know the Lord Jesus or you've lost your way and you wanna come back into a relationship with Him, I would love to pray for you. So I wonder if you could do this, if you would close your eyes across the floor and in the balconies and just take a moment and think about your own heart and where you stand with the Lord. And you say, Lucinda, that is me. I wanna invite Jesus to come into my heart or I wanna come back into a true and real relationship with Him. I wonder if you would just lift up your hand wherever you're standing, I will acknowledge it and I'm gonna lead you in a prayer today to acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ. If that's you, just kind of wave at me so I don't miss I don't miss anybody. Beautiful over there, amazing. Who else says pray for me? I wanna pray up the back there, that's beautiful. Who else says pray for me? I wanna open my heart to Jesus or come back into a true relationship with Him. Beautiful, amen, amen. That is awesome, church. And it seems like such a simple thing to do to lift up your hand, but I actually believe it's a very profound thing to do. And I believe it changes the course of your life forever. So church, I wonder if we can do this. Can we take a moment and say a prayer with all of these people who lifted up their hand? And if you didn't lift up your hand, we're gonna, and you know that's you, we're gonna include you in this prayer anyway. So come on, let's say this, dear Lord Jesus, Today is my day. I open up my heart, big and wide, and I ask You to come in. I ask You today to forgive me of everything in the past. Wash me clean today. Let today be the beginning of a whole new adventure of serving You. I wanna be a Christian. I wanna be a follower of Christ, now and always. In Jesus' Name. Everybody said, Amen. Come on, give them a hand. That is awesome. And this is what I'd love you to do. If you prayed that prayer, or if you didn't, and you go, that was me in my heart, I I did pray that prayer. We would love to gift you a Bible. And I'll tell you why. Because that prayer is not the end. That prayer is the beginning of a whole new adventure of you finding the Lord Jesus. And so we wanna give you this. You can go home, make yourself a cup of tea, a cappuccino, a latte. Um, what do you drink here? Rooibos <laughs> for all the South Africans. Um, make yourself a cup of tea and why don't you start reading this, get it in your heart. And I know it's gonna lead you closer to Jesus. Amen. Come on, give them one more hand. Awesome.